hello guys hope you're doing well and as always if you are new to my channel i would humbly request you to subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon so that you shall be able to watch all the latest videos that i will upload on my channel for you guys thank you so today the problem that is at our hand is basically we've got a fixed fixed uh, beam uh, and in this beam basically it is being fixed on one side at point B and on the other side it is being uh, there is a rod an axial rod which is being fixed at point D okay so this type of a beam basically if you look at it we have got a, a combined loading system over here because this is beam we have to solve through the bending process and this is basically uh, an axial tie rod and for which we have to apply the strain energy relations for axial uh, systems for rods okay so we have to basically calculate uh, uh, the strain energy of this whole system okay and then we also have to calculate uh, the tie rod uh, uh, force basically experienced uh, because of this loading of this beam which is 12 kN per meter and uh, the length of this tie rod is 7.5 meter it has been broken over here this is not a fracture but rather just a representation that it is a very large uh, length of the tie rod the length of the beam is 3 meters and uh, the loading value is given as omega is equals to 12 kilo newton per meter so now we shall uh, proceed to how to solve this problem uh, analytically so they say beam bc is a rolled steel w203 into 22 beam having a cross-sectional moment of inertia of 20 E6 mm4. Beam is fixed at B and supported at C by an aluminium tie rod. Okay, it is being fixed at B as he is saying fixed over here and is being supported by this tie rod which is made up of aluminium. Okay, but this tie rod is being constrained at point D. And uh, the cross-sectional area of this uh, tie rod is 100 mm square as shown over here okay you need to calculate the force in this tie rod in this tie rod we have to calculate the force because of this distributed loading which is w uh, 12 kN per meter they have given you the modulus of elasticity for the steel beam this is the steel beam whose modulus of elasticity is 200 gigapascal and this aluminium tie rod has got a modulus of elasticity as 70 gigapascal okay now uh, in, uh, you can have this problem solved through different methods and get the input one of the ways is you can get it from the table also the inputs as they say over here is w203 into 22 okay so what is the meaning of uh, w203 into 22 it explains that this is a wide flange beam it is a wide w stands for w wide flange uh, i section beam okay if you look at it at the end of your uh, book R.C. Hibbler there, there are tables given in the appendices for the I-section beams okay 203 is basically the uh, nominal depth of this uh, I-section beam over here if you look W203 into 22 into 22 so the, uh, the the nominal depth given is basically over here is 206 okay and they have given this as 203 okay and uh, what does the meaning of 22 stands for 22 is basically explaining us that it is the uh, the basically the weight it is the weight of the beam uh, per unit length and it can be if it is in English units uh, this could be represented as uh, 22 could be represented as basically uh, pounds per feet of uh, length it can also be represented as tons per meter of length or it can be turn per kilometer of the length so it depending upon the dimensions it can be but it is uh, represented in this way okay i hope this understands okay the moment of inertia in the question it is given 20 e6 millimeter 4 so if you look over here they have given you the, uh, this i section beam has got uh, uh, moment of inertia is about the x axis and the y axis okay and if i look i have about the x axis uh, about the x axis the moment of inertia is 20 e6 millimeter 4 okay so it is given over here okay and uh, if in a problem exam problem do not take it about the y axis okay you have to take it about the x axis and if for example they haven't asked in this question they ask you to calculate the deflection the mid deflection on this uh, uh, beam 
uh, you can always use the value of the section modulus as this 193 to calculate the uh, maximum bending stress in this beam also. So, like this way uh, you can basically uh, solve your problem uh, from the table to get you get your inputs in order to solve your fully problem. This problem if you look at it uh, uh, you can also have this uh, uh, the free body diagram they have explained to you over here the B is a fixed support so they have given you two reactions over here and this is the loading this is the loading and uh, this is the tie rod and on this tie rod if you look at it uh, at point D they have applied a force P this force P is being applied over here okay so it means that uh, the concept is quite understood now we can proceed with the anal analytical process to solve this uh, system okay so the first of thing is this is the inputs that are given uh, w203 into 22 and i section beam already explained you what does this means this is ixx i told you you have to take ixx from the table uh, this is area of the tie rod this is the force in the tie rod and these are the symbols that you can use uh, t is tie rod b is the beam e is steel modulus and el is the aluminium modulus the origin is set at d0 comma 0 if you look at it this is the origin is set at this point okay now we can use uh, we have to formulate the strain energy uh, uh, equation of the whole system okay we can say that the system total strain energy will be equal to the axial strain energy of the tie rod plus the bending strain energy of this beam so this is the very important equation that we will use throughout uh, uh, the solution of this problem and we can symbolize it as strain energy total of the system equals the strain energy of the tie rod plus the strain energy of the beam okay uh, here it of course it is the axial uh, strain energy and this is the bending strain energy okay we have already uh, derived the relations for these two respective strain energy in the previous class okay so let's proceed and uh, we can uh, say that uh, the force developed in the tie rod is p because of the bending load okay so he is talking about uh, this force p if you look at it this force uh, p he is talking about uh, this force p is developed in the tie rod because of this loading okay so you can say it is basically equals to the force in the tie rod sigma square area of the tie rod into length of the tie rod over two times the modulus velocity for the aluminium because it is made up of aluminium plus 0 to l m square dx over 2 esi these are the relations uh, that have been derived for bending strain energy and for the axial strain energy okay standard relations now we can basically uh, transform this stress into force per unit area so you get this relation p square into 80 lt over 80 square e a e a l into 2 and this is m square dx over 2 esi okay we can further simplify the relation and once we get the simplification done we can basically write it as p square lt over 2 at el plus the same bending strain energy relation now the main thing is basically we have to uh, we are fine here but we have to calculate the bending strain energy for the beam okay so strain energy at point d can be given as the total strain energy of the system differentiated with respect to the force p which is in the tie rod okay and we can further uh, simplify this as uh, deflection at t equals to tau ut over tau p okay we apply differentiation with respect to p okay because this is the castigliano second uh, theorem approach to okay so we can say through this equation this this equation we differentiate it with respect to the force p okay so basically what we can do is basically uh, we can uh, this was our beam the beam that was here this beam we basically going to cut this beam we're going to cut this beam from any point uh, uh, here we can we'll cut it from here in order to avoid the reactions of this strain of this fixed support so we can cut it uh, from here and our axial force uh, which is this one we can put it over here because of uh, we're using uh, for, uh, force is transmissibility concept okay force is a sliding vector so uh, we cut this beam over here here is the cut being made and this is the uh, uh, shear force and the resisting bending movement this is the force in the tie rod which has been put over here just below the beam because of the sliding vector nature of the force and this is when it is made the cut is made at a distance x and this is omega so we we'll take p as a sliding vector so now we have to put uh, uh, calculate this m which is this one and then we have to differentiate this m with respect to p to put over here okay so uh, once this is being done 
uh, you can see that uh, in the uh, this is your resisting moment this is uh, going to be p into x and this will be uh, to make uh, loading as a force omega x into x by 2 from point o we are going to take the moment very simple so moment will be minus m plus p x minus omega x into x by 2 equal to 0 so this moment will transform as simplified as m equals to p x minus omega x square by 2 okay this minus m is taken on the right side so it becomes m and then differentiate this m with respect to p force p dava m or dava p will give you x and this is the constant which becomes 0 now we are going to insert the value of m and dava m by dava p into our uh, bending strain energy equation okay this is m and this is dava m by dava uh, p okay so these two relations this and this relations are being put over here multiplied so now what we can do is basically uh, uh, leave it like this plt over atel just like this plus uh, 1 upon es into i and uh, multiply this x with this uh, uh, bracketed terms px square minus omega x cube by 2 into dx okay now we can basically do is be a, this is 0 to l integration with respect to dx so it becomes uh, uh, px cube over 3 0 to l minus omega x 4 over 8 0 to l once this is being done we can basically uh, apply the uh, limits which are from 0 to l okay we can basically apply the limits uh, which are from 0 to l so the relation becomes as uh, plt over atel plus 1 upon es into i and it becomes as uh, this is being multiplying okay definitely multiplying pl cube over 3 minus omega l4 over es into i multiplied by 8 okay so now what we can do is multiply this es into i with this uh, uh, term and with this term also so it is simplified as uh, pl cube over 3 esi minus wl4 over 8 esi now this is the main term that we uh, the main uh, energy term uh, of the whole system that we have developed over here okay so now we know that since uh, our beam uh, if you look at this beam of ours is being constrained it is being constrained at uh, this point d it is being constrained at this point d so what we can do now is basically since it is being constrained so you can see that we have put uh, deflection at d is equal to 0 the deflection at d equals to 0 so now what will happen is that uh, this this deflection at d will be equal to 0 and now you can see uh, this equation this equation has all the uh, values over here except p this is p and p this is the length of the tie rod this is the area of the tie rod e aluminium given length or and then this is the length of the beam this is the es for the steel uh, sections uh, moment of inertia for the beam this is the loading for the beam length of the beam and all these parameters are given and this uh, only one unknown is in this equation which is p okay now we further simplify the numerical data we have inserted the numerical data over here and we have simplified it and once uh, we have simplified it we basically get uh, the force in the tie rod of this uh, combined loading system is p is equals to 9.15 kilo newton and definitely it's a tensile force okay because you can see its symbol it's acting in the top part side of the tie rod so the force in the tie rod is tensile in nature so this is how we we will solve we have solved this uh, complex combined loading problem and i hope uh, you have understood this problem uh, i thank you all and i hope you have a wonderful day and uh, allah hafiz thanks a lot